Hey guys, it's me, as usual. Uh, this video is going to be a lot different than what I normally do. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it without any further lollygagging. So basically this is going to be a build that I tried to do a run with, but it didn't really work. But I'd encourage other people to try it because I think it's a lot of fun. It's probably pretty similar to a build I did like two years ago, but eh, whatever. I need to make more videos, I guess. So first I'll go over the weapons and I'll go over the build and all that good stuff. So first I'm using the Tempest 21 rifle. I'll quickly go through the modifications I'm using right now. So the bigger the better suppressor, a stability mod, and, uh, using a signature magnifier gadget, speed pull mag, and the professional's choice sight. I'm also using a reticle I don't like. I like the tiny reticle. Anyway. I'm also using the Arbiter. I'm pretty it's just got the bombardier barrel on it and a concealment boost. As you can see here I'm using concussion grenade, electrical brass knuckles, ECM jammer. Um I don't actually use it, but I have it. <laughs> I'm using the LBV. Okay, and then uh oh, grinder. Yeah, that's the important part. I'm using a grinder perk deck on DSOD cuz I hate myself. So going over the build really quickly, basically the key points are going to be converts because um, I'm not a cool guy and I can't run grinder without converts because it's just way too much heat to deal with on DSOD. Also I just went ahead and picked up hostage taker ace since that little bit of extra health regen helps sometimes, not really too much. Honestly you could probably take these points out and you'd have 12 extra points you could just spend elsewhere. It doesn't really matter. Over an enforcer, um, underdog ace probably helps next to none except on the particular high set I'm doing the run quote unquote run on um, these were just kind of spare points that I had that I really didn't know what to do with and uh, let's see picked up Iron Man basic picked up Die Hard Ace of course to boost the LBV armor just a little bit I'll explain why in a second I got scavenger ace to kind of help a little bit with the tempest ammo pickup it's already got good ammo pickup but just to make it a bit easier on myself uh, hardware expert basically just because I had points um, and I also got some skills to help the tempest out in terms of DPS reload time just its general weapon stats made them really good if you uh, notice here I actually have like 100 stability and 88 accuracy and then when combined with fire control basic I have 100 accuracy when firing from the hip effectively so pretty good weapon it's basically a laser beam shooter um, I got inner pockets aced to help get my concealment down really low and then I picked up low blow aced and unseen strike aced uh, these crits the combination of these crits really turn the tempest into a killing machine oh and of course the professional helps since my tempest is also silenced and then in Fugitive, I had a spare point, so I just threw it into martial arts. So that's pretty much it for the build. So I'll go ahead and move on over to the gameplay, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. So with this heist in particular, San Martin doesn't have the regular Zeal unit spawns. It just spawns regular elite SWAT units, so they don't do the insane amount of damage that the Zeal units do, the 255 per shot. Um, I assume that if somebody had enough patience and time on their hands and willpower, they could probably finish this heist <laughs> with a uh, grinder and zeal units on. Probably with no converts, no downs, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, Really, the enemy types that you have to worry more about, since there are no zeal units, at least on this heist, are the regular SWAT units, the ones that have about the same health as murky water enemies. Of course, dozers. Uh, tasers are dangerous, but tasers actually do more damage than I thought they did. It's just, without the zeal units spawning, and just the other enemies, I never, <laughs> I never notice how much damage the other enemies deal, just because in comparison it's, you know, next to nothing most of its tickle damage in comparison to the zeal units because they just completely obliterate you and so with grinder 2 in particular it's basically just lots of really heavy armor gating and I'm talking in terms of death sentence lots of heavy armor gating and you can maybe uh, tank a shot well no you can tank at least one shot from full health from a zeal unit but then after that you're just toast 
So you're basically entirely reliant on armor gating, and if you're just entirely reliant on armor gating, there are better perk decks to use, of course. I mean, I think that goes without question. I'm not trying to advocate that Grinder is by any means a good perk deck to run on Death Sentence, because uh, if we're just being realistic, there are always going to be better options than Grinder. I think Grinder is a lot of fun. Um, I miss running Grinder on Death Wish way back in the day. Before it was... Uh, or not before, rather, it was after it was nerfed. Because, you know, when it came out forever and ever ago, I can't even remember what year it came out in. But whenever it came out, it was really, really busted. It still wouldn't do good on Death Sentence, just because of the way that the perk deck functions. Uh, but even after that, I still really enjoyed using Grinder for a long time on Death Wish, just because it was, it was still usable, since health wasn't just, <laughs> you know, a one-shot buffer from death, essentially. So, it, it's basically a really long way of me trying to say that you can use Grinder on this heist <laughs> if you play really, really carefully. In fact, I think uh, finishing this heist is really doable uh, in the current state of this heist. I don't know if they plan on... I'm assuming it's probably maybe a bug. Um, I think it maybe was Aori not too long ago who had told me that they basically just moved the Russian cops over from the Boiling Point heist and the damage values still aren't fixed or something like that. I don't I don't really know, to be quite honest with you. I just paid attention that I wasn't dying in two shots every time, or at least from the units with body armor. So the Tempest uh, can just tear through things. Has really good ammo pickup. I mean, you have to put a pretty hefty point investment into it, or at least as far as I'm concerned, to get it to the point of other... Weapons. It's not a bad weapon. I wouldn't even call it an off-meta weapon or anything like that. I mean, clearly, LMGs and things like that are going to be superior. I'm punching that guy because he accidentally killed a uh, shotgun SWAT unit that I wanted to convert. Because the shotgun units are better than the AR units. I mean, that's just kind of a given. If you're going to take converteds. I think there was another one I run into here in a minute, though, and it really doesn't end up being that big of a deal. And getting the shotgun converted in this particular run wasn't too important to me, just because I just wanted them to be meat shields and take aggro for me. So you see there, I got shot after my armor had went down by one of those heavy SWAT guys, and it really only kind of tickled me. <laughs> Which was nice, it was a nice feeling to not just have my armor stripped down and then instantly all my health is gone and then I'm dead. Um, or at least from one unit way off to the side in no man's land. I'm not going to get into talking about my opinion on balancing for this game or why I think it's just bad and not fun, and why I'm also bad. <laughs> and arguably I'm not fun either, so you know, maybe it all works out. Maybe this game and I were made for each other. <laughs> but The Tempest is good. Uh, it's definitely not bad and it can be made to be really, really effective as you can see here. I'd argue that it's really effective. There are a few moments when I kind of get low on ammo, but I just have to run out and grab these pickups and I'm fine. Of course, you have to keep in mind when you're in a team play setting, playing with friends that, you know, you need to share ammo pickups. You, you just can't play the same. So you might have varying success if you use the Tempest with teammates on DSOD. Again, of course, depending on how many points you put into it, because this build also is really centered around squeezing as much, uh, it's, I guess it's a hybrid of survivability and DPS, which is what all builds kind of boil down to on loud when you think about it, or uh, functionability using, you know, deployables and things like that, so talking about thing, using things like trip mines or drill skills or whatever, so functionability, survivability, or DPS are just kind of what everything boils down to in terms of skills. I don't really have much functionality, I don't need it for this heist, this heist is really, really straightforward. Which is why I wanted to try to do a run on it, and I've tried a few times. I've probably tried a total of less than 10. See, like he busted my armor and he was shooting me and it barely did any damage. It's great. Or at least for these guys anyway. Like, I, I don't know. There are other units though that just kind of tear you open like the regular SWAT units do. You might see that later, I'm not 100% sure. I was trying to play this really, really careful. Which is unlike me, I'm usually extraordinarily risky and some people might say I'm still playing really risky in this run. I don't really know. But... I felt like I was playing a lot safer than I normally would, which this heist lends itself to playing safe just because it's got nice long corridors that you can funnel enemies through, it's got plenty of side rooms to duck into. Overall, I really like the design of this map. Um, it's actually a lot of fun to play on. I've heard a lot of, some people were having a lot of 
performance issues on it, but I'm really not having any. Like when I'm outside, especially in the very beginning of the heist, I tend to dip below 60 FPS, but whenever I'm inside and when I run outside, like once the assault wave has started, I really don't have that many issues. Uh, I don't know. Which I've been upgrading my PC a lot recently. That's neither here nor there. I'm supposed to be talking about the run. Um, so, Tempest, good. I covered that. Grinders, meh. Kind of talked about that. Um, it's fun to get a lot of health regen with Grinder. And again, I'm using it on this heist. Because um, health is actually more of a viable method of surviving <laughs> instead of just armor gating, which is basically what Death Sentence boils down to is just finding ways to armor gate better than anything else. Or if you're using something like Kingpin, which kind of just has a god mode for a few seconds, or Stoic, where you can just kind of regen health. Like, no, it, Stoic is kind of just a better grinder, honestly. Well, I mean, they're not the same. They function differently, but better at the same, at the core, which is regening health. Well, no, that's not true. Redact everything I just said. Oh, okay. Stoic works on <laughs> DSOD, and grinder doesn't nearly as much. It just has no, no way of surviving once your armor is stripped down. The bright side though is snipers don't really do an incredible amount of damage to you. Since, uh, which I get extra health from the converteds and I'm not sure exactly what the damage output of snipers is on this difficulty. But I know I survive a shot a little bit later and I actually really don't lose that much health all things considered. So it was pretty cool. And that felt nice. A big Big difference from Anarchist, where you just kind of get hit once, and from a sniper, I mean, and you die. So, of course, the, I guess probably the most quote-unquote difficult part of finishing this heist would be moving outside to get all the bags in spite of the snipers and the SWAT turrets, because the SWAT turrets are just awful. I hate SWAT turrets. They shouldn't be in this game. <laughs> there should could have been better implemented units for uh, area denial. I just, uh, whatever. That comes down to personal preference, I guess, in terms of balancing. But I hate SWAT turrets. I hate the SWAT turrets in this heist. I think they're garbage. Especially since there's like three of them that spawn or something. I don't think I even got a particularly bad SWAT turret setup spawn. But still. And they really don't do uh, too much to you on um, grinder just due to the amount of health that you have. I noticed uh, a little bit later I'm able to take quite a few shots before having to be really concerned and hiding behind cover. So, which kind of just goes to to show that the real reason that Grinder just doesn't work on these higher difficulties is just the damage output of the units that you're facing is extraordinarily high and it prevents you from being able to take any damage. Yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. I'll grab this bag and I'll start trying to move towards cover, particularly towards the back, and I'm pinned between two SWAT turrets. The other one doesn't go live though. Oh, never mind, I didn't take any health damage like I thought I was going to. That's a little disappointing. <laughs> well, not disappointing at the time, but it's disappointing in post <laughs> when I wanna when I wanna talk about it. I'm still pretty sure it's locked on to me though. I think you can still hear the bullets firing. It's just very aggravating that they can stay locked on to you for such a long time, even when line of sight should theoretically be broken, but it's not. Yeah, okay, no, I took a little bit of damage from it there. I only took three or so shots, but it still didn't do too much to me. So if you're able to get out of the way of the turrets, it's not too bad. Of course, I just really want to break line of sight with it right here, so I just go ahead and run over, drop in the bag, and just saying to heck with it. I don't think the enemies will pick up the beast parts. I don't know if that's true for other heists that use the beast, but um, they don't seem to mess with them at all, so I didn't really mind just leaving it there in the middle of the street. I also really don't like this garage once enemies start spawning outside because it's just a constant stream of them and it becomes really hard to move the bags inside. So moving from outside to inside is just incredibly annoying. Um, moving the beast parts and then of course at the end of the heist you have to move the form money bags out which isn't as bad. I also got tased here and I've started to not implement shockproof into my builds. I used to live and die by shockproof whenever I did solo runs and part of the reason is just tasers are just so freaking annoying they just clip you out of nowhere but thankfully uh, that one didn't catch me with my pants down too bad seeing how those enemies hadn't come around the corner yet. see I took a sniper shot and it did uh, really didn't do too much 
Part of that might also be due to the LBV and that I tried to squeeze as much armor out of it as I could to act as a bit more of a buffer. Because again, at this point, against enemies that do a lot of damage, a, you know, like dozers, I had to play super, super careful around them. But for the, uh, dealing with the other enemy units on this map is kind of just dealing with tickle damage, which isn't too bad. You just need to kind of deal with it in waves. You don't want to take too much damage all at once. I mean, clearly, it's just kind of a given, right? So, but I mean, all in all, I'm probably like more compact maps like this, like regular Harvest and Trusty, just maps where there's lots of good cover to move from. Grinder's really not that bad. Um, you know, go figure. If a map is if a map is well designed, it means you can play on it more readily with perk decks that aren't the super meta ones to prevent you from getting shot when you're wide out in the open. It's it's almost like it's good game design or something. I don't know. Just something to keep in mind. Really, this run hinged on not a lot of things going... How do I word this? There are some runs where nothing can go wrong and everything has to go right as well. So, you know, spawns have to be good and things like that, and you can't mess up when you're playing. For this run, it really comes down to... It's not that a lot of things have to go well, it's just that nothing can really go wrong. So I don't need like super perfect spawns on a whole bunch of stuff because a lot of the spawns are fairly consistent or they're just completely negligible and don't matter. So like the the bags are kind of all going to be in the same few spots kind of repeatedly. You might have to cross a bit more of the courtyard to get them. Courtyard? I don't know what I was trying to say. But really the spawns don't matter that much. I'm trying to be very careful of snipers in between waves so I don't just get ganked. I was trying very, very carefully to move. I tried to see if I could shoot the Arbiter through that little hole in the trees, if there is one, but it didn't look like I, that I could, unfortunately. Go ahead and reload before I move over, just to be safe. So yeah, very unlike, <laughs> very unlike me to play this cautious. Like even then, normally I would just would have ran right across and tried to ignore the enemies and hope I would have been okay, but I probably would have got tased through some little crack in the fence. I'm so proud of me. I was playing so patient. I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I mean, it's still not good. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm still totally washed up at this game. It's terrible, but it is kind of refreshing to see myself not playing like an idiot. And I was also a little surprised too once I got the the beast set up. I felt like the interaction was supposed to be longer without AI, but it wasn't for some reason. Maybe that was just like a mental thing. But. Almost got caught in a bad situation there mid reload. I just kind of reloaded on reflex without getting back into cover. It's not a bad habit of mine, is I kill an enemy and I just automatically go to reload before really checking to see if it's safe to reload quite yet. It's a really, really bad habit. And also, if you notice the runtime right about now, you'll notice that we're coming pretty close to the video's end, but the video's end and the amount of time left on the drill don't really seem to match up, and you're about to see what makes, if you don't already know for yourself, what just makes running so annoying or doing like these difficulty runs so annoying and why I personally don't do them anymore and leave them to people that are way way better than me. And to be fair I know I'm using grinder but I'm also playing on the easy highs so that you know theoretically speaking if I were to use like anarchist and a uh, LMG build I should be able to breeze through pretty simply but boom dead. I mean, just <laughs> before I could even react, shot, turn to look, shot again, and did. And, I mean, that's it. Runs dead. So, uh, try the build out. Have fun with it. I hate this game. <laughs>